welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. We all have fantasies. Some even try to live them out. And some, in spite of themselves, have them lived out for them. Dark, light, pleasant, terrifying. Let the human mind rest. And in sleep, or in daydreaming, some fantasy, somewhere, sometime, is bound to take shape. Pleasant or unpleasant. Few of them come true, but every now and again... Come on, Mervyn, you're not sore at me. Keep your voice down, dummy. This ain't the garage. Hey, you bet like I told you, I didn't have the guts to go all the way. Oh, that's great. You just handed me the original horse laugh. I told all the other horses how I laid a seven-horse parlay on you that couldn't lose. And you let me down. Our mystery drama, Straight from the Horse's Mouth, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Robert Morse. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Life is a cycle, and a cycle is a wheel. And if the wheel turns often enough, life can be rather dull. It wasn't, for example, notably thrilling for Hubert Purley, bookkeeper for Haskins Machine Screws Nuts and Bolts Company, a business where even if the books balance all the time, the most sober of citizens, after enough years, may end up with a screw missing himself. Add to that a humdrum life at home, and let Hubert tell you his story himself. Whether you want to buy it or not is your decision. There's a saying in our business. Stay bolted down in it long enough and you're bound to go screwy. I used to laugh at it when I first started in because I thought it was funny. All these years later, I wouldn't be too sure. Anyone who has someone like J.D. Haskins for a boss doesn't come up thinking... Anything is very fun. Polly! Oh, damn it! Polly! Ah, Miss Pratt, didn't I? Oh, there you are, Polly. Uh, y- yes, sir, Mr. Haskins. Here I am. Well, come in, come in, come in. Where have you been? When you called me, I was there, and I came right to here. Well, well where, where, where's there? I was checking the inventory. Why? According to the Drisbone Company, they were short several nuts. On the last order. Oh, well, they're luckier than I am. On staff here, I have too many. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny. Well, sir. I'm glad you think so, because I don't. Oh, if you don't think so, I don't either. I thought it was a joke, Mr. Haskins. Well, I don't make jokes, Pearly. Now, you ought to know that by now. I guess I should. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going out of town for a few days, and uh, this weekend, you know, to drum up some business so we can all keep body and soul together. I'll be missing a few days till Monday, and... Uh, I am trusting you to keep your eye on things. Now, I'm leaving things in your hands. You'll take care of the payroll and the bank deposits, huh? Yes, sir. And don't forget that Friday is a holiday. Thank heaven there's someone in this business I can depend on. Well, that's all, Pearly. I'll, I'll see you Monday. Almost everything Mr. Haskins says is like a threat. Even just, uh, see you Monday. Everybody is in awe of Mr. Haskins, even our foreman, Sid Wenzel. That loud mouth. So he's going to give our ears a rest for a couple of days, huh? Why, Sid, how can you talk that way about Mr. Haskins? You notice I keep my voice low and mellow so it don't carry? You didn't answer my question. Well, just today and tomorrow, Friday is a holiday, remember? <laughs> remember? It's the only one around here I remember since last Christmas. Do we get paid? He's authorized me to disperse wages. Never mind a fancy bookkeeper talk. Check or cash? Why cash? Just like always. Okay, now I can relax. Uh, don't forget the combination of the safe now. <laughs> don't worry. I wouldn't dare go back to Beatrice without my pay. I was you, I wouldn't dare go back to Beatrice. At all. Ever. Beatrice is my wife. Well, what am I going to say? <laughs> you got to understand Beatrice, the lover. 
I found out. And her mother, uh, Bertie, that's her mother's name, owns the two family we live in. It's in Astoria. It's a semi-detached. I, I don't know why they call it that, since it's right in the middle of the whole block, and you have to drive around the ends down a very, very uh, narrow driveway to get to the garage, if you got a car, which we don't. Uh, Bertie lives down, and we're up. Who oh, who's that? I got a shotgun here. Don't you come anywhere near. It's all right, Bertie. It's just me. Eh? Who's me? Hubert. Oh, you. <laughs> Who are you expecting, Jesse Jane? Oh, well, no call to make fun of a suffering woman. Oh, what's wrong, huh? Oh, I got this sharp pain running across my back. Oh, I just got no strength anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Well, what are you reading? Oh, just glancing through my poor husband's old books. Oh, that's his veterinarian encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. Some of it's real interesting. More than I ever thought about him. <laughs> Maybe a little too interesting. What does that mean? From what you told me about your symptoms, uh, looks like you might uh, be coming down with a hog cholera. Hog cholera? Well, what do you mean, Hubert? A person can't come down with something that infects a pig. I don't know what made me say it. <laughs> yes, I do. But I shouldn't have. Still, I'm, I'm not sorry. Uh, let her stew in her own juice for once. I had worse things to face. I was home, but I was late. And Beatrice is waiting. Where have you been? Uh, just coming home. You're late. Yeah, not, not very. Well, just as well. Uh, aren't you glad to see me? Sure, I will be if the bar rose isn't stuck. Sit down, we'll eat. Couldn't I just uh, wash my hands? Why? You got that ink on them again? No, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I just have to go to the bathroom. Oh, all right. You got to understand, B. She gets impatient because she shouldn't really have married me. I mean, I'm not successful or anything. I wanted to be a CPA, but my father died, so I uh, went to work and ended up a bookkeeper for Haskins Machine Screws Nuts and Bolts. I knew I wasn't going anywhere. So did B. The only difference was I was ready to settle. She wasn't. So it's like a high school reunion up in Syracuse this weekend, seeing it's a holiday. And I saved up, and I'm going to go. Oh, that's fine, B. Uh, oh, it's good, good pot roast. Tastes like it's stuck to the pot. Well, we had to wait for Hubert. So did the potato. Oh, hush, Ma. It's not that bad. Now, listen. You get home on time Thursday night with your pay because I got to leave first thing in the morning and I'll need the cash. Sure. When will you be back? Maybe never. You're kidding. Why? You like that? Oh, no. No. So, okay. Now, be a good boy and you have nothing to worry about. I wish I could go with you. To a girl's reunion? That's why he wishes. Oh, hush, Ma. Now, honey, you know we got over a thousand saved up in my bank account. We'll take a vacation soon, the two of us. And leave me alone. Oh, stock up on TV dinners. You won't go hungry. Okay, so everyone's paid off. You all ready for the big weekend? After I close the safe. Uh, you said your wife was taking off for a couple of days? Yeah, I've got to get right home with my pay. What are you doing the rest of the weekend? You know... I don't play poker. I wasn't thinking of that. Or the horses. They ain't running tomorrow. But you used to go for the GGs before you were married. Ah, the horses, yeah. That was a million years. B cured me. I wasn't thinking about betting. Or what then? Did you see the paper this morning? I don't read the racing. No, no, no. I meant the story in the journal. What story? Hume Pidgeot died. And today they're selling off all his racing stable. You know, pretty, pretty fancy boy went for seven, five, oh... Seven hundred and fifty dollars? Why, are you a crazy? Seven hundred and fifty grand. You're putting me on at auction? You said it. And another went for 400 grand, uh, 350, a couple around 300. It were all like that. Boy, I, I would have loved to see any horses worth that much. Look, I was thinking the auction's still going on tomorrow, and it's open. So what do you say you and me, uh, if your old woman is taken off, we go have a couple of beers, watch the fun, and maybe dream a couple of dreams. Oh, uh, what dream? Well, I, like you and me could put in a bid and maybe beat the game the way that small guys never do. What's that mean? Well, look. We can pretend maybe that we bid in on some filly, you know, or some two-year-old. Then we have a ball watching the racing results and figure out how we might have become millionaires. What do you say? You want to take a whirl? <laughs> might be my only chance. Even my last chance. <laughs> Where's the auction? Bill J. Spot. I'll meet you at the information booth from the Fleet Hound bus terminal right after I see B off at 10 in the morning. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Oh, 
Hello to Mr. Hyam of the Camera Stable, Princess Nebuchini. How do Princess pay it back to my portrait barrel for the amazing low price of 220000 Holy cow, $220,000. bucks. Yeah, but look at her. Those lines and the way she carries her head. That's a princess. Come on. What do you know from horses' figures? The only figures you know you write in a book. A lot you know. I grew up on a farm, and one summer I was an exercise boy for a racing stable. No kidding. No kidding. So how come you never went into handicapping? I mean, you know horses, you know figures. How could you lose? I don't know. I, I married B. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Your attention to number 333 in your catalog. 333. I wish I had a catalog. Who doesn't? Why? Something about that pony. Well, you got a hunch? But if you were just If I did, what difference? Who could afford him? That's right. I wish I could, though. Well, don't be a jerk. Who needs a horse? More a companion. A buddy you want? Buy a dog. Now, going to be a... open the bidding on Berlin. Do I have an opening? What's his name? Berlin, like an omen. Who's money? Didn't you ever see Camelot or read about King Arthur? He was the great magician. A wizard. What, like the Wizard of Oz? Something like Do I have a bid of 600? I have 500. Do I have a bid of 500? Do I hear six? Do I hear six, gentlemen? Five. Right. That's the I, I could see him blush. How could you see a red horse blush? All right. I have eight. I have eight. I have a bit of eight. Who'll give me nine for this unusual animal? Do I have nine? No one? Eight seventy-five? Come on, horse lovers. You should be ashamed. Eight fifty. Take your hand down. You Do I hear a raise? Eight fifty. Hey, eight fifty. Can't what let him go that low. I just can't let him go that low. Three times going, going, gone. You the general's of instruction. Very good. What is what it? are you crazy? You just bought yourself a horse for eight hundred. And fifty bucks. Oh. Hey, all right, all right. Stand back, everybody. Stand back. He's all right. He's all right. He, he just got excited and he fainted. Who of us who have attended auctions have not had that irresistible urge to make a bid just for the vicarious thrill, feeling safe that someone will bid more? And how many of us have had nightmares that it might happen and we would win the bid? I'll return shortly with Act Two. So, here is Hubert Purley, bookkeeper, suddenly owner of some 1,200 pounds of horse. But what, at the moment, is an even more important figure an ower of $850. Hubert Purley, who has fainted not only from his temerity, but from the sad but certain knowledge that his entire capital is $3.40 and one bus token. All right, everybody, all right. It's all under control now. Just give him some room to breathe, huh? You be you okay? I had a bad dream. What, did you bought a racehorse? How'd you know? Because that's what you did. The guy's leaving it over here right now. Oh, no, oh, no. $850. That was the price. Maybe there's a sales tax yet. I wouldn't know when you buy a horse. How am I going to pay for it? What's B going to say? One thing at a time. Uh, you could maybe give him a check. Are you kidding? All I got is fifty three seventy four in the Christmas clock. Then I got one answer for you. What? B's going to say plenty. Uh, where's the guy that bought Mervyn? Oh, 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 you mean Merlin the wizard? No, no, no. I mean Mervyn the stable pony. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the guy. Well, here's your price. They're waiting for you at the auction desk to put up your dough. Wait, wait a minute. What do you mean stable pony? This here, Mervyn. What do you think you were buying? Citation? No, but I, I thought, I mean, I... I, uh, I, I still want to know what you meant by stable pony. Uh, can't you read a catalog, mister? This is a workhorse. You know, an odds and ends guy, but he's really dependable. Well, that's not what I bid for. Well, maybe not. But, mister, that's what you got. Hey, you trying to Welsh? Oh, no, it, it isn't that exactly, but hey, see... Wait, 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 wait. Now, let me tell you something. I know Mervyn, and he's worth every penny you paid for him. Now, he may never have had the chance to show any field his heels, but he has bloodlines. I mean, real class. He has? <laughs> you ain't just a whistling Dixie. You know, you got a rig to pull him away? Uh, no, no. Well, you better hot foot down the stringers and hope he has a trailer left to hook onto your car. How much will that cost? How far are you going? Mm, oh, just, uh, uh, like in the neighborhood. Eh, hey, no sweat. I'll run Mervyn here back to the stables. Uh, you get your transport arranged, you get your receipt, and I'll be all ready to help you load him. Huh? 
And let me tell you, mister, for my money, you got a real good buy. Here's money. What am I going to do for... Wait wait a minute. Sid, Sid, I, I got money. Hold on the fort. I'll be right back. I was clear out of my mind, of course, but suddenly life had thrown a challenge at me. And with B out of my hair, I I mean out of town, I wanted to live up to it. Besides, I was stuck. I had bought something for which I had to pay or suffer the consequences. I wasn't uh, stealing Mr. Haskins' money out of the safe. I was only borrowing it. A thousand dollars to cover buying Mervyn, renting a car, a horse trailer, uh, contingencies. I had that much in the bank. Well, not under my name, because I'd given all my money to be. Still, it was my money. I wouldn't worry right at the moment just how I was going to explain what or why I I had spent it on Mervyn. Do you know what you're doing, Hugh? No, just what I got. We're sitting here in a rented car with a horse trailer hooked on, and in that trailer is a horse. Now, what in hell are you going to do with it? Not yet him. I'm going to put him up in our garage, that's what. He wanted me to clean it out anyway, and we don't have a car. You've got to be crazy. I already was. Just do me a favor. Help me get Mervyn settled. Then take back the car and the trailer. It's paid for. I must be crazy, too. Okay. That's the last time I ever drag anyone with me to an auction. I must say, Mervyn seemed to be taking it all in his stride. Honest to Pete, I swear he winked at me. I got the four-by-eight plywood panels I used for a picnic cookout table to put on the concrete floor and a bucket to put some oats in. I stacked two bales of hay I'd gotten in the corner and spread another over the two-by-fours. I kept myself busy, all right, because as long as I did, I did have to think what I didn't want to think. How am I going to explain to be about Mervyn? Oh, well, what'd you say? <laughs> it's all beginning to get to me. I thought I heard you say something. Did you? You, Hunk? Is that you out there? And what are you doing? No, I, I was just uh, uh, fixing up the garage, Bertie. <laughs> hey, don't, don't, don't let her know you're out here, huh? Hold it down. Okay. But how long do you think you can hide a horse? Well, just till I figure out how to... Uh, holy Toledo. Oh, my goodness. Now I am hearing things. You got someone down there with you, Hubert. You're not drinking beer with one of those men Beatrice doesn't allow in the house. No, I'm not doing that. No. I suppose the moment my daughter's back is turned, you'll have that Sid Wenzel back again. No, Bertie, Bertie, honest. No, none of the guys come around anymore. I'm the only one. The only guy down here, that's all. <laughs> I'm fixing up the garage. Well, just remember, dinner is six shop. I don't want to miss any of my shows. <laughs> Who's that old man? That's my mother. No, no, no. You, you, you didn't say that. <laughs> you mean you don't like an old battle axe like that? It, it isn't that. Uh, oh, oh, no. Now on top of everything, I'll have to go to a psychiatrist. B could never live that down. What are you talking about? What are you talking for? You're a horse. Horses aren't supposed to talk. Well, I ain't no ordinary horse. I don't believe it. I just do not believe it. Here I am talking to a horse. But worse than that, the horse is talking to me. Hey, what are you, a snob? Look, Mervyn, I... uh... I've I got to get out of here, okay? What's the matter? I say something wrong? Just the fact you're saying anything, that's wrong. Would you excuse me a minute? Sure, it's your house. Only, uh, don't be gone too long. Huh? No, I'll, I'll try not. I mean, uh, you comfortable enough? Well, yeah. Well, uh, just as soon as it gets dark, we could maybe take a walk. Yeah, just don't take too long. I ain't no elk, you know. <laughs> I don't know how I got through the next 36 hours or so. You ever try to hide a horse in an area like Astoria? Especially with nosy neighbors? I gotta say, Mervyn cooperated. He was used to early hours, and he kept real quiet during the day. And a couple of nights, we took nice long walks. Once I got over the first shock of his talking, I got used to him. 
And I must say, he was the first real close friend I had in a long time. He was a good listener. So by the time Dee got back, I knew he was at home and happy, and I was ready to fight to keep him. So you enjoyed your weekend? Well, you know, Ma, it was interesting to see the old class, of course. <laughs> the successful ones didn't show up, just as run of the mill. Why don't you ask her what she means by that, Hubert? I don't know what you mean, Bertie. Oh, you know what she means. She means my classmates who married well. Oh, like you didn't? I didn't say that. What did you say? I'm not arguing. I just say it was interesting. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. A special time. So, what went on here while I was gone? Nothing, nothing. Same as always, you know, more or less. Hmm. <laughs> more or less. What does that mean? Ask him. All the comings and goings in the basement. Uh, I got to go watch TV. Thanks, Bertie. Uh, you don't ever get away with nothing with me around. What do you mean by that? Well, there's something I have to explain about this weekend. I knew it. You dragged in all that cruddy bunch of friends of yours who used to run around with drinking beer and... Could, 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 we, could we just talk about this calmly? Talk? Then maybe I could answer you. Okay. Now, you know how it is with us. I mean, every time I bring my check home, I turn it over to you, right? Right. So? So, it, it, it is our money. Yeah, well, I take the money because you don't know how to handle it. For your sake. And I put it in an account where it's safe. For me. What does that mean? Well, it's in your name. I can't write a check. That would be cash. Well, of course not. That's how I keep it safe. But supposing, now just supposing, supposing I needed to write a check on that account or to get some money, hmm? uh, how would I, I get it? You just ask me. Then would you give it to me? Well, it depends for what. <laughs> Well, maybe you better come downstairs and meet our non-paying guest. I mean, mm -hmm. sooner or later, you've got to anyway. I'd rather it was me the Trojan than Bertie or, or someone else. It ain't the sort of thing you could keep secret too long. I can't believe my eyes. That's a horse? Well, strictly speaking, he's a pony. Uh, his name is, uh, Mervyn. Well, I don't care what he is or what his name is. But I, I wanted to introduce you. Introduce me to an animal? Are you soft in the head? Mervyn. Mervyn, I'd love to have you say hello to my wife. This is my wife. Uh, Mervyn? You have been drinking. Hubert? You know what you're doing? I'm just trying to have Mervyn say hello to you. No, I... I want that dirty, smelly animal out of my mother's house by tomorrow morning. Now, just a moment. There's some problem. Like what? Well, like I... I bought Mervyn for $850. And it, what? And it, yes, it cost pretty near 1000 with transport, hay, and all like that to bring him home. What did you use for money? Well, yes, money. I borrowed it from the machine screw nut and bolt factory. $1,000. But I have to have it back there first thing Monday, tomorrow morning. And where are you going to get it? What we, uh, I mean, you have more than that in the savings bank. And you expect me to give it to you? It's my money. I gave it to you. To invest, to take care of. Right. So Mervyn's an investment I made. I, I need it for him. I'm not going to give it to you. If you don't, don't you, I'm going to jail. Oh, wait, Gilbert, I can't believe you. I can't leave you alone for a minute, but you get into trouble. I didn't mean to, but Mervyn was in trouble, too. He needed a home. Uh, right, Mervyn? What are you looking at that dumb horse for? You expect him to speak up for you? Uh, I thought maybe... Uh... I think maybe you don't think. Oh, okay, we'll go to the bank tomorrow and draw enough to cover whatever you stole. Borrow. What you took from your boss. Then we'll get rid of Mervyn or whatever his name is. I can't keep him? For what? He's a friend. We're, uh, we're companions like. I'll give you a choice, Hubert. Me or that mangy horse. Now, don't stretch your brain. Just remember, at least me you can talk to. Don't feel too bad, Hubert. She don't know I can talk. Let me tell you something, Mervyn. I think you're a great guy. But you've got your limits, too. as good as a word. 
We got in the bank early, cashed a check for a thousand, and before Mr. Haskins got in Monday morning, I had the cash back in the safe. I never would have believed it, but the way things were shaping up, that was the least of my problem. Now, what was I going to do about Mervyn? I took the most direct way, and at lunch hour, I went home to lay all the cards on the table. Mm, yeah. I see a problem. That's no help. I see my problem, too. But what am I going to do about it? Oh, don't look too tough to me. Oh, it doesn't. No, like this here. Now, your mother-in-law owns a house, right? Right. And you don't have no money because your wife gloms onto your paycheck every week, right? <laughs> and I'm not welcome because it costs money to get me and it'll cost even more to keep me, right? That's right. But suppose it. Supposing I was to become a breadwinner, that I brought in enough dough to keep us all here, like, like we horses say, rolling in clover. Oh, that would be a horse of another color. Yes, oh, we got him made. Oh, we do, do we? How? I'm going to handicap the races for you. Better than that, I'll tell you the winner. Or uh, how to find out who's going to win. You could do that? You will pay how could anyone turn his back on a tip from me, eh? <laughs> it's straight from the horse's mouth. So, Mervyn has suddenly turned from a liability to an asset. And what an asset. The possibilities beggar the imagination. Mervyn could turn out to be of more worth than Aladdin's magic lamp or the genie in the bottle. We'll soon find out when I return with Act Three. At Mervyn's request, Hubert has sneaked upstairs to find the morning paper, carefully avoiding Bertie's beady eye and his wife's more formidable nose for anything so wildly out of the ordinary as Hubert being home at midday. Now, both horse and man are glued to the entries for that afternoon at Aquamont Racetrack. Oh, read them out to me, Hubert. Well, in the first, there's Pug on my heart. Hot dog, forget him. A precious and true blue. Should be lucky to get out of the gate. Prometheus Flame Torch. The names they go for a pleader. Hide and go seek me. That's your boy. Start slow, but comes out of the rock at the half pole, and he'll blow them all down by at least three lengths. How much dough have you got? About three bucks. Holy cow. I mean, you should excuse the expression. What's hide and go seek me go off at? I beg pardon? What are the odds? Oh, five to one. That'll get you 12. Why did you say this was going to make history? Because to build you any kind of a stake, you be boy... You're going to need the seven-horse parlay. Oh, you got it all straight, huh? I guess. First race, I bet two bucks on hide-and-go-seek me to win. That gives me 12. Second race, I bet the 12 on Princess Handmaiden at 14 to 1. That brings me a little 180. Third. I go to the paddock. Sorry, that's right. And look for the horse with the blue and gold silks up. As he passes you, you say, My then sent me. Right? Mm. Then you tell him the name of the three horses I give you already. When you name the right one, he's going to give you a big wink. And you know the fix is in. That's the horse you bet. I got it written down. Uh, fourth and fifth and sixth. Uh, uh, what, what, what's the matter? Well, you know how it is. You, I ain't been around the stables a few days. Now I ain't... On the inside, like usual, so maybe you should spread your bet. No, 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 no. Would you, let's make it simple. Pick any one of the three to show. It's a hedge, but you couldn't lose. And it'll hold your stake, even build it a little. Because for the seventh, I'm giving you a horse couldn't lose even if it fell down at the quarter pole. On three legs, it'd still get up and left the field. You sure you know what you're doing, Mervyn? I'm helping you win enough money to become like maybe a millionaire. Supposing I should lose. So what did you blow? A lousy two bucks. We could start again tomorrow. I left straight for the track, calling in on the way to the office and reporting sick. <laughs> I was sick. 
sick with fear, anticipation, dread, and a kind of wild excitement I'd never had in my life. If Mervyn was right, and even accounting for the three races, he couldn't figure exactly with a two-dollar bet I stood to come home with, oh, half a million to a million bucks. I want to tell you, that turned my blood to water. What would have turned my blood to water is if I had known what was happening back at Astoria while I was making the big fling. For heaven's sake, can't you give a person enough time to... Oh, officer. Something wrong? On the complaint of one of your neighbors. Said neighbor by constitutional guarantee and local ordinance not compelled to reveal his or her name. I am here with a plain summons for you, ma'am, to show cause... What right you have to maintain livestock on these premises without a permit? You got one? One what? A permit to maintain livestock on these premises. If I don't... You're liable to find unless you get it out right away. Officer, that's just what I want to do. But how do you get rid of a horse so easy? Well, how did you get hold of it in the first place? Oh, oh, it's a long story. It was my husband's fault. Ah, oh, he owns the G. Uh, No. As, as it happens, I do. I, I mean, he's, he's in my name. I signed the check to buy him. Then you collect the fine. But I'm the one who wants to get rid of him, only I don't know how. Well, now, maybe you and me could make a deal, lady. Hmm? I got me a cousin on my wife's side. You wouldn't believe what he does for a living. Well, I don't want to get mixed up in anything against the law. Lady, you're talking to a defendant of the law. It's just that my cousin runs a horse and carriage by the Park Hotel. You know, so people could ride old-fashioned lovey-dovey stuff through Central Park. So? So he's got a sick horse, and he's looking to buy a new one. And you don't come by a horse all that easy these days. He lives right down the block. You want him to give your horse the once-over? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, if you could take him off your hands now, I wouldn't have to hand you the summons. It could be a win all around. Hmm. Why don't you come in, officer, and call your cousin? Maybe he could come right over. Like I say, I didn't know any of this because I was at the track. And after the second horse came in, I called Sid at the factory and told him what was up. I needed moral support. I mean, I was sick with excitement. And when he heard what was going on, he got sick too. And Mr. Haskins was out two employees. Sid met me, like I told him, at the $10 window just before the fourth race. Hey, Sid! Sid! Over here! Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Rube, what do you say, old pal? Going. Oh, I can't believe it. Hide and go seek me came in first by four lengths. Just like Mervyn said. What'd he pay? Five to one. Woo! I took my 12 bucks and laid it on Princess's handmaiden on the nose. What were the odds then? They went up. She went off at 15 to one. Wow. 12 times 15. That's the cost of 60. Yeah, you rest your brain. 666 plus 12, 672. And then what? I held back two bucks and rode the 670 on the next horse. And which one was that? That was Sandman M. A coming, like Mervyn told me to do. I got that from another horse. How was that again? Hey, the horses are coming out in the truck. Oh, still plenty of time to bet. What'd you ask me? I said, how did you get a tip from another horse? Well, the way Mervyn told me to do, I went to the paddock, told this horse, Mervyn sent me, and asked him three horses which would win. He gave me Sandman M. A coming. And he won? Well, he was the favorite, seven to five. Wow. So let's see, that gives you, uh, you got 954 plus your bet. That makes a thousand and eighty-six. And you're only on your third leg of a seven-horse parley. That's why I needed someone for moral support. Why? The next three Mervyn couldn't handicap all the way. I mean, I got to bet to show. So even a horse could be wrong. And I could blow all I made. Right now, I'm even with the game. Yeah. But look, look, I'm looking here. If all three horses show, you figure to come out with, a, with at least two grand. And the seventh race is at 90 to 1. You could become an instant millionaire. That's what's making me nervous. I mean, like, uh, the first time. What are you talking? I mean, quit while I'm even. Like, tomorrow is another day, and Mervyn could handicap that for me, and I, I could get rich by easy stages. I don't know what it's... I'm superstitious, mate. Oh, you're yellow. Okay, all right. Wouldn't you be? I mean, in my place? I'm going to shut up. If I said go ahead and anything went wrong, leave me out of it. It's your decision. I didn't have the guts. I mean, would you? I sat there like I was turned to stone and watched the last four races. All the horses Mervyn gave me won, placed or were show. And in the seventh, you know the long shot ran away with the field? I could have been a millionaire. But at least I had my first two bucks and nearly 1,100 profit, and some of it sitting me blue on some 
beers, and, and then I went home. I'd called in sick to the office. I, I was sick, but I had no idea just how really sick I was going to be. Well, I'd sure like to know where you've been, Hugh. Phew, with a breath that's enough to knock over a horse. Don't mention the horses to me. Where are you going? Your dinner's burning up in the stove. I couldn't eat the way I feel. I'm going downstairs to see Merlin. <laughs> downstairs to see Mervyn. Oh, my, isn't that a caution? He's going to see his boyfriend. What is that? <laughs> what, uh, what does that mean, Bertie? You've finally blown your cork? If you think anyone's crazy around here, we all know who's the only one. You, talking to a horse. Who said <laughs> I talk to a horse? You'll be. Well, I saw you trying to, and then, and Bertie told me you were mumbling away down there talking to either the horse or yourself. Which doesn't make much difference just shows who's crazy and who isn't. For your information, that horse downstairs can talk. And if I had the sense to listen to him, we'd all be millionaires right this moment. Look, you'll be maybe you better go to bed. Right to bed, and, and I'll get you a nice hot drink and call Dr. Schultz. I hmm? don't need Dr. Schultz or your advice or Bertie's sarcasm. First off, first off, look, here, here's a thousand bucks to put back in the bank. Where'd you get that? At the race. From one two dollar bet parlayed through three winners, Mervyn gave me. If the both of you had only left me any guts, I'd have gone all the way and let him make us rich. I'm going right now to apologize to him. Wait a minute. Are you serious? What you're saying? Today, that horse in our cellar could have made us millionaires. I didn't have the sense to listen to him, but you can bet your life I will not close my ears twice. Hold it, Hubert. No, ma'am. This is important. There's no sense going down there. Uh, why? Mervyn isn't there anymore. Well, I just wanted to stay out of trouble with the police. So I sold him. I called in sick again and headed into New York. 59th Street, you know, just north of the plaza where all the carriages, rigs, and... The tourists ride through Central Park and wait for business. It didn't take me long to find Mervyn. He was hitched up to a red and yellow handsome cab and chewing contentedly on a bucket of oats. His driver was off talking to some companion so I could speak up quiet and say, Hey, Mervyn. Come on, Mervyn. You're not sore at me. Keep your voice down, dummy. This ain't the garage. Don't you want to come back? Tell you the truth? No. You sore at me? I ain't sore at nobody. The story it just wasn't my bag at all. You mean you like where you are? Sure. Easy work. Stroll through the park with the birds singing every now and again. Companionship. I mean my own kind of people. And a lot of horse talk in between jobs. And the stable with my own kind of facility. Sure. That suits me fine. Hey, uh, are you in a box? You bet, like I told you. Well, no, uh, I sort of, uh, I, I dropped out. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't have the guts to go all the way. You want to make me sick? Well, I was telling all the other horses how I laid a seven-horse barley on you. And you let me down. Oh, I wouldn't next time. You'll be pally there ain't no next time. Anyone follows the G's knows that. For most I ain't even the first time. So it's like marriage. You got to figure out philosophy. Don't mix. Better you go your way, and I go mine. You wouldn't come back to a story. Hey, watch it, that crazy kid on the motorcycle. I didn't mean to push you so hard. You trip on a curb. Hey, Hubie, you're real cool. You're okay, buddy. Buddy. Hubie. Hubie. Hubie, you okay? Uh, I, I... I had a bad dream. What, that you bought a racehorse? Yeah, how'd you know? Because that's what you did. The guy's leading it over here right now. Oh, no, $850. That's right. How am I going to pay for it? What's B going to say? Plenty, I guess. Uh, you the guy that bought Mervyn? Uh, you mean Merlin, the racehorse. No, I mean Mervyn, the stable pony. They're waiting at the desk for your dough. Hey, you tried a Welsh? It isn't that. I didn't mean to buy him. You put up your hand on an 850 bid, didn't you? Yeah, but I, I didn't mean to. If it was a misunderstanding, he'll go to the underbidder before you. But just between you and me, mister, you are making a big mistake. This here horse is worth every cent you bid, and then some. I'll take your word for it, mister, but count me out. 
It's like I learned my lesson, but good. Any horse I back is the wrong horse. It would be nice to think that someone, Hubert Curley or you or I or any other such deserving soul could get rich overnight, any way at all, including backing the horses. But in the calm light of day, we all know that it's only a dream, don't we? So in the end, we'll all find more happiness in forgetting our fantasies than indulging them. Still, that doesn't have to stop us from dreaming, does it? I'll be back shortly. Just by way of a parting thought, she's a good horse that never stumbles. Everyone makes mistakes, but it leaves a pleasant taste at the end of this tale that no harm was done. And if uh, you are in New York and are looking for Mervyn, he's the one with the top hat and the red geranium behind his left ear. Why don't you try and engage him in conversation? Our cast included Robert Morse, Augusta Dabney, Brian Rayburn, Ian Martin, Mandel Kramer, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.